REST API or sometimes we can call it as RESTful API or RESTful Web Services. So what is REST API, how it works, all kind of stuff we are going to learn in this video from the very basic in detail. But before that, you should have some idea about API, okay, like what is API, how it works. So I have created one video on API with five real life examples. So if you're interested, then I'll give you the link in the description below. Just go and have a watch. So I am going to talk a lot on this topic. That's why I've divided this video into two parts. The content of part one and part two, you will get that from the description below. So in part one, like in this video, I'll give you the concept of REST API. And in part two, I'll show you some practical, some demo. But let's recap API just in a few seconds. All right. So API is nothing but application programming interface. So it is kind of piece of software with which you can communicate two or more pieces of application. So because of API, all kind of application today are connected. All right. So because of API, we can integrate multiple features in your application. So let me give you one example. Like because of API, you can book your flight, let's say for Indigo Airline, not from their official website, but using different platform like phone pay, Paytm and so on. So I am assuming that you have the basic idea of API. So with that, let's start today's topic. Hey there, this is Gaurav. Welcome back with another video. Without wasting any further time, let's jump right in. So let us start with an example. Uh, the example which I have shown you in the last example in API video. So this is more about a situation oriented. So here you have to create an application which will show the weather report. So this application will show you temperature in different regions across India. All right. So you might be thinking that I can install multiple temperature sensor different regions in India. I can get that data from there, right? Yeah, that's a way, but it's not the right way. Why? Because this is where you have to invest a lot amount. It is very costly. Not only that, you have to spend a lot of time. So the best way of doing is using API. Means someone, some third party has already done it. They have their own sensor and we can get the data from there, like from their server. All right. So that's where API can help us. So now let's look at it. So we have a client at the very left and at the very right, we have server. So here the client is who wants the data and server is who has the data, right? So I need to have the data from server, right? So in order to do that, first I will request to the server. Hey server, can you please give me those data so that I can use it in my application? Then server will process your request and then it will give you the data in the form of response. Okay. So here you can see this is nothing but API, which is basically connecting the client to the server. Because of API, this client and server, they can talk to each other. They can communicate to each other with the help of request and response. So this is nothing but API. Well, now you might be thinking, what is REST API then? Just hold on. I'll discuss on that just in a few seconds. All right. Now let's talk about response. Response means what kind of data we can expect from the server right as a response so let's talk about response now so there are different type of response which we can expect from the server right so one type could be html kind of web page which i'm showing over here but i don't need the web page right what i need i need data kind of raw data so from web page it would be very difficult to you know get or bind or process on those data right so HTML in that case is not the right response type for us. All right. Let's look at the next type. Next would be XML type. So I'm showing you some dummy data over here. This is how XML response looks like. But there is a protocol called SOAP. Uh, just I'll discuss on that. So this is what using XML data type. So this kind of response is something uh, still we can work with it for our application. But there is a better uh, response type as well. Now let's look at that. Okay. And this is what we are going to use. And this is called JSON JavaScript object notation. You can see this is how basically we are going to get the data from the server. 
So you can see this data is nothing but a JavaScript object having key and value pairs. You can see we are having ID, maximum temperature, minimum temperature. So this data type is very, very easy to use, to process, to bind with UI, all right? So uh, JSON is something which is mostly used nowadays. So actually this is nothing but the raw data. And this is what I need from the server in order to create that application or build that application. So now let's understand what is REST or what is the meaning of it. So in this communication, which is happening between client and server in the form of request and response, it should have some protocol. It should follow some rule or regulation, some standard. So that is why we have different kind of protocol at different layer, all right? So a very well-known protocol called HTTP protocol, uh, which is used to access data on worldwide. So if I look at it, then it has at the bottom internet protocol. It is at network layer, then transmission control protocol at transport layer. And then at the top, we have HTTP protocol at application layer, right? So if you want to make this channel secure, if you want to have some kind of encryption so that no one can uh, read it, what you are sending. So you need to have one more layer called security layer. And that is where we have something called TLS or SSL, that is secure socket layer. So, and this is what called HTTPS protocol, if you want to make this channel secure. But there is one more protocol at messaging layer at the very top, which is called SOAP. So SOAP is nothing but a protocol. SOAP is basically, uh, it is simple object access protocol. It is an XML based messaging protocol. So XML means, as I mentioned earlier, the response type that we have in case of SOAP, it is of XML type. So this protocol is for exchanging structured information in order to implement the web services in computer network. All right, then what is REST? So REST is, first of all, it is not a protocol. It's not a standard. It is just some set of architectural constraint or style. So I will discuss on the constraint one by one. But now let us understand the meaning of REST, like R-E-S-T. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. So this idea, this concept was invented by Roy Fielding and he has changed the API landscape forever. Now let us understand the meaning of this term. So whatever the data that is there in the server, we will call this data as resources, okay? So while sending those resources from the server to client, server is not sending the resource directly. It is basically sending the representation of it. The resource is still there in the server and it is sending or transferring the representation of that resources. So this is why the term representational will come here. And state. So here state doesn't mean we are talking about session state. We will talk about this constraint at the end. So here state means the resource or the data that server is sending, it is nothing but the state of the resource at a particular point in time. It means the value of that resource, it can be changed over a period of time. Like minimum temperature, it can be changed uh, from 27 to something else. So that is why the resource that server is sharing or transferring to client, it is not only the resource, but it is a representation and a state of the resource for a particular time. And transfer means it is transferring. From server to client, it is transferring the resource. And that is why we have the name representational state transfer, nothing but raised. So in web world, in web services, whatever the operation that we are doing, we are doing basically something called CRUD operation. C for create, like creating or adding some record or data in server. R for reading or fetching or getting some data. U for updating some data and D for deleting. So we will see how this operation can be performed using REST API one by one with example. Also parallelly we will see what are the constraints are there in REST API. So before that, let's talk about API endpoint. So API endpoint is a location from which APIs can access the resources or in other way I can say API endpoint is a point where two pieces of software can communicate to each other. So in REST API, 
we are following some standard structure for API endpoint. So this is something like this. First, we have protocol. You can use HTTP, HTTPS kind of protocol. Then we have domain. Now this domain it can be a different level of domain like domain, subdomain and so on. After that, we have something like API. So it is something which is optional. You may use it, but this is a standard that we should follow and we are following it. After that, we have resource path. So this is something from where we can understand which resource that we are talking about. Okay, it's kind of pattern. So let me give you one example of API endpoint. Here we go. So here we have HTTPS as a protocol and then we have the domain like www.sopify.com. Here Sopify is an application. After that we have API and then customers. So from this customers like this resource path, we can understand like in this API, basically we'll be talking about accessing some resources which is related to customer, okay? So let me give you one more example. So from here, you can understand we are having one at the end. That means we are specifically talking about the customers whose, let's say, ID is one, okay? Then we can also provide some query parameter, like we can provide some filter, we can limit the data and so on. But there is a problem. And the problem is, let's talk about the first example. Here we can understand like we are talking about customers resources, right? But what kind of action that we are going to perform that is not clear. Like it might happen that we are going to delete those customer. It might happen we are going to read those customer like we are going to fetch those customer. So what kind of action that we are talking about which is not clear. And because of that we have something called HTTP method or verb. So for this CRUD operation, we have specific HTTP method in REST API. So for create, we have post, for read, we have get, for update, we have put, and for delete, we have delete. So now let's look at the final API endpoint, and which is, here we go, get and this endpoint. So from here, we can understand using this endpoint, basically we are going to get or fetch or read customer's data, right? And that is where we have the first architectural style or constraint for REST API, and that is uniform interface. It means an individual resource can be identified from this API endpoint, like from this resource path. So here we have customers. That means we are talking about customer's resources, right? Number one. Number two, uh, if we are writing let's say gate over here that means wherever we will write gate we'll be talking about only getting or reading or fetching data we'll not talk about deleting or updating right and number three this enter request like this endpoint is itself itself descriptive message that means from this request we can easily understand what kind of action that we are going to perform what kind of resource that we are talking about so this is how we are providing uniform interface for all API endpoint in REST API. So that's all for part one. In part two, I'll discuss on how CRUD operation can be performed using REST API. I'll give you some practical demo how we can fetch, we can get weather data from weather API. Also, I'll talk about some constraint and how you can be sure that you are creating a RESTful web services. I'll give you the link for part two in description below. Just go and have a watch in order to get complete knowledge. Now, if you have any doubt, any queries in this video, please let me know by giving a comment in the comment section. So for more video, you can follow my channel. Thank you for watching. Take care. Tata. Bye-bye.